So I want to make sure before we go on, before we start doing a, a project on this, that you actually understand what an ecosystem is. The point of last night's homework was you, for you to understand what an ecosystem is. So if you haven't done that, you're going to have to do it again anyway. If you've done the homework already, you won't have to do it again. That was the point of you having to do this homework. It would make your project easier. Make it easier for you to understand means you have to do less work. But now, for anyone who didn't do it, you will have to do the work again. So um, let's get started, okay? So who can explain to me what an ecosystem is? Kimmy, what's an ecosystem? An ecosystem is where what animal lives. Uh, yeah, okay. What animals live in an area? Okay. Hun, what's an ecosystem? An ecosystem is where um, it's like um, um, a food trench for the, for the animal, but not for the people. Mm, not necessarily. Kind of right. If the ecosystem does talk about food chains, I agree with you, but... The fact it doesn't necessarily include people? Uh, well, let me ask a question. Who thinks that people are part of an ecosystem? Lucy, do you think yeah. people are part of an ecosystem? Um, yes. Can anyone have a guess, please? Winter, can you have a guess why people are part of an ecosystem? Because people are living things. Yeah, perfect. We're all living things, right? We said an ecosystem is a community. A lot of living things living together in the one place, okay? Humans live in places where animals live. That's a fact. You know, fair enough. We live in houses and we live in apartments and we live in cities. You know, cities could be an ecosystem, right? You think about pigeons, you think about rats, you think about all these things that live in a city. They're part of the city ecosystem. Humans are therefore part of a city ecosystem. We affect our environment, don't we? We pollute it, we throw rubbish out, we throw bins out, we do all, we make mess. We have cars, we have motorbikes, we affect our ecosystem in some way. So humans are most definitely part of an ecosystem. At the end of the day, humans are animals, right? We're animals. Fair enough, we're the smartest of animals at the moment, but we are definitely part of an ecosystem. The point of me talking about all of this is not just to so you can all sit down and go, oh, did you know? I know what an ecosystem is. That's completely pointless and irrelevant. What I want you to understand and what I want you to be able to do is to make a project about this. And this is what we're going to talk about at the end of class today is we're going to start a project about ecosystems. And the only way we're going to be able to do this is if you understand what an ecosystem is. Now, as we are going through the project, we will learn more and we will learn more about things that make up an ecosystem, things that make the ecosystem run well or run bad and things that affect the ecosystem and the way plants and animals work together in an ecosystem and the things that the plants and animals do for ecosystems. So these are all things that we're going to do, but you need to understand what an ecosystem is, right? The point of your homework was to do that. So I will say this clearly. One more time. An ecosystem is a community, a lot of animals living in a particular place, working together and being affected and affecting their environment. I'm going to try this quickly. What is the difference between an ecosystem and the environment? Who can tell me? Yes, Han, thank you. Han, what's the difference between an ecosystem and an environment? The ecosystem is what affects the animals and, and the environment is the way, like, uh, like if you got a house, so if you, okay, so like the environment is where the animal is and how they get food and the trees, and small things in the environment like lakes, rivers, houses, to KFC, McDonald's. Yeah, that's an environment. Now, some so some uh, some of the things you said was correct. Okay, right. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you on my screen. I'm gonna try and explain this a little bit better for you. 
I'm going to quickly go through these ex uh, explanations again, then we'll move on to something new. So, uh, an ecosystem is a biological community, so lots of animals living together. The animals and flowers, uh, animals and flowers interact with their physical environment, so they, 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 uh, they work together with things that are around them. For example, the air, the water, the temperature, they all interact with this. They all change in some way. We looked at adaptations. Adaptations are how animals change for their environment. It's an area in which all living and non-living things are existing and affecting each other. So their temperature affects the animals by making sure they need to keep themselves cold or they have to keep themselves warm. Animals are then affected in the way that they have to grow uh, special fur or they need to be able to do something which allows them to live in that area. A habitat is the place where an organism lives. That's what we need to know and that's, that's the simple part of it. Okay? So, Let's watch this video again. I'm going to ask you all some questions, other questions about this video. Yes, Billy. What 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 other animals did you see in that video? Uh, I also see uh, some bugs and fish. Bugs and fish. Okay. And what were the bugs and fish doing? Lambi, what were the bugs and the fish doing to the tadpoles? Eat it. Yeah, they were eating them, right? So there we have an example of some other animals living in an ecosystem, okay? Who can tell me what, what, what kind of ecosystem was that? Where did the frog live? Like, what was the frog's habitat? Let's, let's go back to that, okay? Where, where did the frogs live? Pumpkin. Pond, okay. So yeah, they were living in a kind of pond, okay. Now, they are the little frogs. What about the big frog? Uh, Lily, where did the big frog live? Not the little ones, but where did the big one live? Is this so, a rainforest? Yeah, it's kind of like a rainforest, right? So he's living next to, yeah, so he's living next to a pond in a rainforest, right? Now, the reason I ask you these questions is because I want you to understand where they live. I asked you about the animals that also live there as well. And I asked you what those animals are doing. So all of these things, right? They're all part of the ecosystem. So in this sense, you have tadpoles being born, you have other animals eating the tadpoles, and then you have the tadpoles coming out of the water. Now, the ecosystem is the water, the rainforest, and the leaves. What was, so, what was special about the, the father frog? What, what color was he? Rosie, what color was the big frog? So Rosie, what color is the Brown. frog? Brown and? Green. Brown and green. Yeah, cool. Why do you think he is brown and green? Rosie, why? I think it's born like that because sometimes they see predators and they need to hide and, hide and uh, it have brown like so and uh, some uh, green like grass so a predator won't see it. Yeah, cool. Good job. So... What frogs have is something called camouflage, okay? Camouflage. The camouflage lets them disappear, hide. So, as Rosie said, it's got brown like soil and it's got green like grass or leaves. We said that it lives in grass and it lives in soil next to a pond, right? So the frog can hide. It can disappear. A frog will camouflage itself. Now, again, what I'm trying to get you to do is to think about everything that's happening for this frog in this particular ecosystem. If you were to look at the habitat, you can say it's a pond, it lives near the mud, and it's got leaves, okay? That's where the frog lives. The other animals that live in this ecosystem are fish and insects. What's the frog doing to help other frog, its babies, survive? It puts its babies in its mouth and stops them from being eaten, okay? So this is how the frog is reacting to its ecosystem. Its environment is the water, the mud, the soil, and it's reacting to it. Okay? So these are all things that are happening for this frog. And these are things I need you to keep in your mind when you're going forward in this unit. Because what you need to understand is how animals change as a result. We're going to look at loads of animals. I'm going to show you a video about a, uh, an animal called a pistol shrimp. 
uh, this pistol shrimp can hit you so hard, right? It's got this like claw where it gets an air bubble and squeezes this air bubble and it goes and shoots a gun. There's a shrimp that can shoot a gun. It's really fun and interesting. Um, but you can see in 17 different colors. A human eye can see in three colors. This shrimp can see in 17. So we're going to learn about lots of different and interesting and weird animals like this. But I need you to understand why they are doing this and where they are doing it. You can do that. Perfect. Then we're going to do loads of weird animals, and loads of fun. Look at some strange animals. Okay. So I'm going to keep going on. No, no more frog. Okay. So what I want you to understand there is that there's five main types of ecosystem. Now, in these ecosystems, there are lots more kind of like little sub ecosystems, but these are kind of the main ones if my computer would just show. So there are forests. So a forest, you have forests and rainforests, right? Grasslands, you have grasslands, wet grasslands, you've got dry grasslands like the uh, savanna. But what you need to understand is that there's, there's lots of different ones. You have fresh uh, tundra. Tundra basically means cold places. So the further north and the further south you go, you become into what's a, it's called an ecosystem called the tundra. If you think about pictures of uh, like Arctic foxes or polar bears, they live in the tundra, okay? Penguins, tundra. But in tundra, you've also got like not so much tundra and then like Arctic and snow, but we'll talk about them when we get to it. But I just want you to understand these five main parts. Then you've got freshwater and marine. Who can tell me the difference between freshwater and marine? Marine is like the coast, like the sea. The sea and the oceans are marine life. So what do you think the differences are between freshwater and marine? When it's salt and fresh water is not. Yeah, excellent. Good answer, buddy. Well done. So marine life generally refers to salt water, okay? So if you look at things which are part of the marine life cycle or the marine ecosystem, it's things like whales and sharks, things that live in the ocean that need salt water. They actually need salt water. What I want you to understand is that there are these five main types, right? There are some more, but they are the main types. And here's a really, really nice picture of a bunny rabbit in a bunny rabbit's ecosystem. What's the main difference between them? So if you were to look at like a, a tropical rainforest and then a deciduous or a temperate rainforest, or even like uh, a coniferous rainforest. So like here we've got tropical, here we've got like normal, and here we've got cold. What's the main, ah, now go back, go back, go back. So what do you think the main differences are between different ecosystems? Think about all the different types of forest around the world, right? Think about the forest in Vietnam, think about the forest in Africa, think about the forest in South America, and then think about the forest in Sweden. Like, oh, really north, really cold. What do you think the differences are between all these forests? It's one simple answer. It begins with T, rhymes with temperature. Hun. Temperature? Temperature. Temperature is a really big part, right? So if you're thinking about different ecosystems and the different animals that live in different ecosystems, well, heat is a really big factor, right? If it's really hot in one place and it's really cold in another place, the animals and trees are going to be different there, right? What's something else that you think can uh, change an ecosystem that makes an ecosystem different from place to place? Let's try this. Let's think about um, Canada, right? Canada is at the north of the world. It's pretty cold up there. Let's think about a pond in Canada. Now, let's think about Australia. Australia is pretty warm. Let's think about a pond in Australia. What do you think the difference between those two places are? Canada. Australia. It's the location, right? It's the place where they are. If Canada is up to north and Australia is down to south, well, then they're in completely different places. Think about all the animals that live in Australia that don't live anywhere else. Why? Why is there animals in Australia that don't live anywhere else? Who can tell me why? Australia is an island, right? You need to get there by boat. You can't get out of there. You don't see a kangaroo going, okay, I'm going to go for a swim now. And he's going to swim to Vietnam. And then we've got these Vietnamese kangaroos. No, that doesn't work. So all the animals that live in Australia live there because it's an island. That's an ecosystem as well. An island is an ecosystem. So these are all the different things, right? So you can have the weather, the inhabitants, what lives there, and the location. Okay, so 
they're the main things that drive a differences between the ecosystem. You take the ecosystem of Australia compared to the ecosystem of Vietnam, they are completely different. They are different because Australia is an island, it's a little bit hotter, it's a bit more southern. Vietnam is attached to the mainland, you've got forest, you've got forest with Cambodia and Laos and China and all these other different places. It's a little bit hot, it's a bit more humid, you know, there's more water in the air. And it's just, it's a completely different ecosystem as a result. So even here, if you were to take two, two examples, right? This is a rainforest, this is in Africa, and this is a desert in uh, California. Now, in California, you still have forests, and in Africa, you still have deserts, but the location makes them different. The ecosystem is different for each one because they are in different places. The animals that live there are different. The plants that live there are different. The air is different. The air quality is different. The nutrients in the soil are different. There's a many different things as to why that they are completely different, even though that they are kind of the same, right? So what I want to do, uh, and what I want you all to do is, we're gonna start a class project, okay? It's gonna be about ecosystems. It's gonna be about the plants and animals within these ecosystems as well. So if I was to ask you, what do you think you're going to study about? What do you think you're gonna learn about in this project? What? Have a guess. If I was to break it down to make it easier for you, so you're gonna have ecosystems, what are they? Where are they? An example. The homework you did yesterday, right there. That's exactly what I would like you to do. Adaptations, what are they? What are some examples and how do animals work together? We're gonna to talk about that in a later one. Changing ecosystems as well. What causes an ecosystem to change? So how, how can we prevent it? So these are all the types of things that we're gonna cover in this book. What I want to make sure is that when you are going through this project, that you are, one, having some fun with it, to be honest. I don't want you to just go write lots and lots and lots and lots of information. I want pictures. I want photographs. I want as much information as you can without having to write. I want you to be able to show me things that you understand. So when you're doing adaptations, for example, and you choose, what's an animal with a really cool adaptation? Oh, okay, a chameleon. Chameleon can camouflage. It's also got a, a really long tongue, right? And at the end of the tongue, it's got like a little hand. That's a really cool adaptation. If you choose to do a chameleon and you want to talk about a chameleon's tongue, like this, cool. Draw me a picture. Don't just write about it. Draw me a picture as well. So what I want you to do is draw a picture of an ecosystem for the front cover of your book. So here's a quick example, right? Ecosystems. This person has drawn a desert, okay? to say draw an ecosystem well here is an ecosystem it looks like an australian ecosystem because that's a kangaroo and there's some termites there some mushrooms we got some bacteria and some fish we got some rocks lilies well it looks like a a scorpion or a crab i don't know i'm not really sure and on the right hand side you have another example so you have a marine ecosystem you got jellyfish and fish you got some snails you got a starfish also got plankton you got the beach in the background so what i want you to do for your homework today and if you want you can take your time with it i don't really mind is draw me a picture for the front cover of the project you will do make it an ecosystem show me some things in this ecosystem show me the trees the water the air the sunlight anything you want just add some detail talk about some or show me some animals as well so that's all I want to do today is draw me a nice picture of an ecosystem for the front cover of your book. I would like you to all have it done so that tomorrow that we can have a look at some of your pictures in class and you can, you might talk about them a little bit, just why you chose this ecosystem, blah, blah, blah. Okay, everyone, that is our time for today. <sighs> Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Draw some nice pictures. Goodbye. <laughs>